Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I hope to get this lunar sample return mission down to the surface of the moon and return it safely back to Earth. Now that's going to take some doing obviously. I think we have plenty of Delta V, it's just a matter of the logistics of it. Uh, in order to do the descent we have to do two separate burns, which means burning this stage and then burning the green portions of this stage for the descent. Uh, either one would not be enough to handle the descent all on its own. Uh, this current stage uh, can kill all of our velocity but of course that won't be enough to make a soft landing. So yeah, uh, so that's that's a crink in the plan because there's no way to make a smooth descent with those two separate burns like that. They have two different thrust to weight ratios and all and uh, I don't want to shut off this one. It's just one more burn and then we're gonna let it go because I've already done quite a few burns with this and I don't want to make it unrealistic in those terms. These engines do relight uh, quite, uh, I think they have a maximum of 10, but we're coming close to that now. So yeah, uh, the other complication is that I'm using one kilonewton thrusters here and they don't throttle. And I don't have them action grouped so that I can turn some of them off and some of them on. I could have done that, but I didn't. So that's the thing. Uh, another complication is that we might have a horizon problem. If we tried to land right now, uh, we might be blocked by the horizon of the moon from communicating with Earth. So we do need some of our satellites overhead before we start. Otherwise we could land here, should be fine. So that is an option. Another complication is that we have the Saturn instrumentation unit that is currently controlling the craft under local control out of all things. And once we ditch this stage we're going to be switching to the Agena, presumably. And so that's going to well, it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, we have to make sure that... Uh, uh, so suddenly I'll have the time delay. I'm pretty sure I'll have the signal delay once I uh, dump this stage, in which case I'm going to have to adjust for that. Okay. That's not all I have to think about, but that's that's the start. So here we go. Uh, I think we got to pick up communication with the two flower soon. So once we do, we'll start the December. Here we go. Um, I think it's a good time to start the descent burn. Uh, let's see. I want an equatorial location. Oh, it seems like we're right there. Well, anyway, uh, let's go for right around here. It's probably for the best. Um, we'll need to settle the fuel down. Uh, I guess I'll have to turn RCS on and use a little bit of it. I'll transfer fuel up before dumping the stage. We should have plenty of RCS fuel left in the in the Centaurish stage, the RL10 stage. Okay, now I'm going to thrust forward uh, for about one meter per second to settle the fuel down. Well, certainly, the acceleration should be enough to settle the fuel down. That's not a problem. Okay, and let's light the stage. All right. So we're on the scent. Uh, we'll probably end up a little bit north of the equator. Uh, you can see the coordinates here. Maybe not north of the equator. It looks like we're... But then again, we've got the whole tilt thing to think about. Uh, I'm really aiming for in line with our orbit. Anyway, let me get the fuel up. Yeah, so the green portions of this stage have about 1,200 meters per second of delta V, which is uh, quite a lot. I mean, that's uh, the when you sum it up, when you add this stage to that stage, we've got 200 more than uh, Apollo had on descent. So, and that that was reasonable buffer. Once we decouple this stage, we won't have any solar panels, so we'll be on internal battery power for the rest of the way, all the way back to Earth. And the way we manage that is, first of all, we've got a lot of battery power, and second of all, we're going to be dumping the Agena stage uh, before heading off to Earth on that part of the journey. Let me make sure we've got uh, we've got the satellite communication, two flower communicating. It's a very complicated sort of thing. It's actually communicating through Chandra and possibly through this rinse wind. So we're in the midst of New Horizons hype and Pluto flyby. Uh, the Pluto flyby is tomorrow, but uh, 
we won't be getting all the pictures and data until later. Uh, a few days for the pictures, probably a lot longer for them to assess the data. So, well, it's going to be an interesting time to find out about that that lonely planet out there. And we'll 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 call it a planet now. It's got five moons. It should be a planet. Come on. That's that's a new rule. If it has five moons, it should be a planet. While people are coming up with arbitrary rules about what a planet is, might as well add that one in. So I do have a install of Realism Overhaul for 1.0.4. I haven't tested it out yet, though. I'm planning to test that out on uh, on a live stream, a Twitch live stream, on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. I'll start, and uh, I'll, I'm just testing stability. I'll probably launch something big and see if the thing crashes or not. Basically. I've got a bunch of mods in, obviously, and we'll see if it holds up. If it holds up, maybe I'll do some more with it. If it uh, irritates me, it has glitches or anything like that, then I'll have to assess that. But So I'll be doing a live stream with that on Wednesday. I don't plan to do a Pluto mission uh, to celebrate New Horizons. I think a lot of people are going to be doing that. I'll, I'll, I'll leave that to everybody else since that's going to be a very popular thing to do, and I tend not to want to do what everybody else is doing. Okay, here we go, just using up this stage. Okay, and then we can let it go. I'll throttle down first. And 13 1 kilonewton thrusters just activated. We are now on internal power with no solar panels. Two days and 22 hours left, but uh, once we dump the Agena, we'll have more time. Okay, uh, let's get the landing gear down. So now, as expected, I do have the signal delay of 1.3 seconds. But that's only for certain functions, uh, and I have to try and remember what functions those are. Uh, we have a small reaction wheel here, but it's one of those, uh, you know, realism overhaul reaction wheels, which, as you can see, uh, if I uh, tell it to go retrograde, it doesn't really do much. So we'll probably need RCS on the way down anyway. So signal delay on the SAS, and I'll tell it to hold retrograde for now, and I'll activate RCS as well. We, uh, we have 1,281 on the rest of the descent stage, and you can see we're not going very fast, though. We have to be judicious about it. I'll turn on fine controls so that the uh, the thrusters are still working. You can see uh, you can see flashes of use on the MMH and N two hundred four here, but the animation won't show up, so that's a little bit complicated. Okay, so I'm going to be looking at the suicide burn countdown, and I'll give it some buffer, but not too much. RCS firing away. Here we go. The might of 13 1 kilonewton thrusters. The terrain looks a bit bumpy. I mean, it's not entirely flat. You can see ridges and all. I think there's a ridge here, but I think where we're at it might be flat. We'll see. Verify communication. Okay, communication is good. That saddle will come around here, so we'll probably. We'll probably be good for communication. You can see there's not much T TWR here. This is meant for the moon, and it's not meant to do too much. I think I want to read on my horizontal velocity as well. Let's see. Let's let me get velocity on. Uh, yeah, surface horizontal velocity. I want. Okay, I think we can shut down now. We've got a whole minute left on the suicide burn countdown now. Still not entirely sure how that works out, but hey, we're straight up and down, so it should be able to figure this out. I don't know. But I guess if I burn early, it throws it off or something. Boy, considering they're just glorified RCS thrusters with a little, probably a better nozzle or something. They sure do make a lot of noise, these one kilonewton thrusters. 
seem to have a lot of surface horizontal velocity here. Hold on. Uh, it sounds like it's throttling. It doesn't. So keep that in mind. There's no throttle. Gotta take fine controls off so I can control this properly. Okay, there we are. RCS off. Okay, we are on the moon somewhere. Midlands, though I don't know like, the exact location. I'd have to look up a map. Um, hold on, let me let me look up a map and see where we are. Okay, so it would seem like we are in the middle of things. Uh, there's a Bowditch thing here. Uh, pasture, pasture Crater is here. Louis Pasture. Uh, Hilbert Crater is there. Alden Crater is here. Skalger Crater is here. This is Soyokovsky's crater right there, uh, with the splotch in the middle. Easily, easily identifiable. Looks a little bit damp. But uh, yeah, so we're sort of in the middle of things. Uh, broadly speaking, this is, I guess, Mar well, this is Mare Australe, well, the Southern Sea. <laughs> I'm just going to call it that. Um, we're uh, quite far away from all the usual stuff, like this. Uh, here is uh, the Sea of Tranquility here. So, yep, we're, we're over here. All right, fair enough. Let us do our science. Observe mystery goo. All right, so keep data. Obviously, there's a sample recovery mission, and there's our sample, and we will recover it. Log temperature. Okay, keep data. X-ray data. One second. More than one second? Okay. Keep data. I think that's all we've got. Oh, yeah, the probe situation reports we can get. Okay, keep data. I, I don't know if this probe situation report is any different. I don't think so. But I'll keep it anyway. Okay, so all set there. Um, looks like we have plenty of fuel here. Well, 504 meters per second anyway to get us our start on up so that's good and so we'll just use that first and then uh, proceed let's verify communication is going to hold out throughout ascent and I believe so so uh, we'll just head uh, straight uh, 90 degrees and that should work out for us uh, let's get going before our electric charge runs out let's get RCS on gear up It's not going to be a short trip up, that's for sure. So we basically landed close to 7 tons on the surface, I think. So that's pretty good for a future crewed landing. Okay, two, two seconds left, one second. Okay, staging off those takes a second don't press space bar again wow that had a lot of force all right we are continuing on I'm gonna aim for a hundred kilometer orbit here gotta make sure you have enough time though you can see time to apoapsis is three minutes and 27 seconds but the stage time altogether we'll only use less than half the stage but uh, uh, it's 10 minutes, so you got to have enough time. All right, we're halfway through our orbital burn, but uh, we've got a long way to go, as you can see. Still got communication. Communication looks fine. Uh, location isn't the greatest ever, but uh, I think you'll be fine for making the return back home. So, yeah, it continues. I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, here we go, the last little bit of this. I say a little bit, about 300 meters per second. It looks like, uh, well, we'll see exactly how much our vessel mass is by the end of it, but that'll tell us 
how large a pond we can bring back up, uh, get to the moon and bring back up, we're assuming that a second launch will carry the return vehicle. So, for a crewed mission, of course, I mean. And so we're judging from this what we can actually land on the moon and bring back to the back to orbit, and then that will then rendezvous with the return vehicle. Okay, we are in orbit. And so 122 by 49 is fine for now. Uh, looks like maybe I'll say 2.5 tons. 2.5 tons, just to be conservative. We could get to the surface and bring back up. That's a, that's a good thing. I think 2.5 tons is doable. So uh, yeah, we can look forward to that. There's Sokovsky Crater right there. And let me plot for our journey back right away. We can't loiter around here, otherwise we're going to lose battery power. So, yep, let me get that plot done. Okay, so our return trip looks like it'll cost 774.3 meters per second, which is a lot less than 1,200 meters per second that I planned for. And uh, here we go. I uh, turn off SAS while turning to the maneuver node, and we're lined up now. Uh, so yeah, we have 1,800 left in this stage, which is more than enough, obviously. Uh, but you've also got the locked hydrazine tank in the probe itself here. Uh, so uh, that is a whole other thing. Ma mainly our concern now is with electric charge. And with the separation of this probe and this probe, they're supposed to be together, but they're apparently not now. The this probe in particular has a problem with resizing itself. Anyway, I did not tweak skill at all. It just randomly resizes itself for some strange reason. Anyway, uh, let's uh, get rid of this velocity and get rid of landing as well. And just time warp to the maneuver node. Alright, so... Um, yep, these one kiln thrusters should be fine without slowing down the fuel, I think. They're just glorified RCS thrusters, like I said. Uh, so, here we go. Again, we can fine-tune it uh, with the hydrazine in the probe itself, so we don't have to get super precise here. Yep, crash course. Uh, I guess we can flip around and fix that a little bit. Oh, no, we don't have to flip around. We can just uh, take uh, caps lock off. Make sure that's off and get the maneuver node away so I'm not confused and use the RCS. There we go. Okay, 72 kilometers for now. Looks fine. Gonna take RCS off so that doesn't alter that too much. And we've still got a lot of fuel in here. A thousand meters per second, enough for another uh, burn at at periapsis to slow down maybe which is tempting that's in five days time and we've only got two days worth hold on uh, let's see uh, we know the probes do go into low power mode when time warping so let me just see okay we've got four days worth if we do that still not enough I wonder why it's taking five days to get back that's a long time huh Okay, well, anyway, yeah, I guess we'll have to dump this stage and just rely on the hydrazine then. Verify staging. Okay, well, there we go. Okay, let me wait a few seconds because I don't know whether it's the delay. Or, I, I heard the sound, but uh, obviously things didn't happen. Okay, I think I can press it again safely. Uh-oh. No! Why? Why? Oh, maybe... Oh, there we go. It was because the electric charge was locked. <sighs> deep, deep uh, <laughs> breath of relief there. Five days and 20 hours. Okay, so we've got enough there. Uh, we've got a little hydrazine. We've got the reaction wheel too, so we can just uh, tell Smart ASS to retrograde us or prograde us as necessary. Uh, the kick probably changed our orbit a bit. Uh, we probably don't even have a periapsis anymore. So uh, let's let's get out to 
Kerbin SOI. Look, on Time Warp, we've got 304 days worth of battery life. Excellent. That, that bodes well for our interplanetary missions as well. It looks like this is a probe that we could send to Mars. Though it seems to be ticking down quite faster. This isn't including the antenna. Oh, that's very deceptive. It's not including the antenna. And I'm just going to go for 70 kilometers, I think. Oh. It's too much firing, though. It takes a lot of hydrazine out. Uh, it's, yeah, there's certainly not an infinite amount of hydrazine we have here. Um, I, I'll go to find controls, turn RCS back on, and boost up a little bit higher than that. Make me feel a little bit better. Yeah, I think uh, 71.5 will be fine. I don't mind going around, as before. Though we might may lose con uh, communication, we'll have to see. We'll have to retract the communitrons, obviously. Look at all those lines and circles and things. Okay, so, yep, the reaction wheel should handle getting us to retrograde. There's Earth. And maybe adjust that a little bit. Same 1.5 sounds fine. Okay, let's get closer and then I'll have to retract those uh, communitrons. Now, I could tell Flight Computer to uh, orient properly. Could do a lot of things, but uh, I don't trust flight computer much. But then maybe with the reaction wheel, flight computer will be better. I mean, it may, so it'll wobble a little bit. Let me turn smart ASS. Let, let's do a test of flight computer actually trying to hold retrograde. Yeah, okay. Are we, we're not controlling from the right direction, are we? Hold on. Yeah, uh, this isn't. This is definitely not. We need to orient prograde. Oh boy, very important. Yeah, I forgot the heat shield's on top. We need to orient prograde. Okay, now it's gonna wobble all over the place because it, it didn't have smart ASS half helping it to get in the right location. Okay, but anyway, it's got a reaction wheel. I could probably arm the parachutes right now. I don't think we'll get to the altitude where they'll deploy on this round. I think we're just going to skip off of the atmosphere. And that's intentional. But just in case. Okay. Now that I've done all that, I'm going to retract the Commutron 16s. Alright. I think we're uh, configured for re-entry now. Let's see what happens. Okay, here we go, flame effects. Still in communication. I could turn on RCS if necessary. I think I'll just do it as a precaution. Well, it, we don't have that much hydrazine. Okay, uh, we're uh, at the point where our orbital period is less than our remaining battery life, which is good. So again, that doesn't include the antennae. We're at 500 degrees Celsius. We're approaching periapsis now. Okay, and that's periapsis, 445 degrees Celsius, still increasing on the temperature, which is fine. That's sort of expected, but we are now going up. Yep, now temperature is decreasing, probably a little bit sooner than it ought to. Probably in the new version of Realism Overhaul, that will not happen. Okay, flame effects are dying down. We are over Malaysia. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's okay. This is the Indian Ocean. I expect that we'll have an Indian Ocean splashdown on the next go-around. We'll keep the periapsis the same, probably. And hopefully that'll bring us down. Okay, anyway, our probe has survived its first pass without any serious damage, and we'll time warp around, and, oh, well, I say no serious damage, 
Uh, I take it back. I think it's this probe core, the Ranger Block 3, that has been resizing, judging from where the ports are sort of floating away. Yeah, this, this must have been larger initially and decided to become smaller. Strange. Also strange that the commutrons seem to have no problem sticking to it. Okay, anyway. Uh, let's go around. Okay, here we go again. We gotta keep time warp on. We should end up at the prograde vector or close to it. Uh, flight computer can handle the rest. Parachutes are still armed. We seem to be above Africa right now, Sahara Desert. And, uh, well, it looks like the planet has rotated a bit. So our periapsis is now over Ethiopia. I don't know if we'll make it out to the Indian Ocean. We'll see. Maybe. Okay, here we go. We've got effects. Eventually, I'm going to have to tell Flight Computer not to hold orbital retrograde. We need surface retrograde, probably. I should have done that instead, but doesn't matter by that time by the time that's critical we'll probably have parachutes deploy anyway hopefully so skimming through the atmosphere at this altitude 633 degrees Celsius and decreasing somehow and uh, yeah now we are suborbital definitively didn't end up actually going up so it was actually pretty ideal and uh, so ideal that we might end up splashing down in the Pacific, let, uh, not the Pacific, uh, Indian Ocean, let's see. Um, but we're aimed at the Indian Ocean, uh, I hope we can sort of skip over Somalia. Uh, we'll see, maybe end up in Somalia. We still have communication, which is excellent. Heat shield temperature is now going up again. We're starting to lose the blade of shielding. 800 degrees Celsius. Whoa, what's happening? Oh, shoot. Something blew up. F3. The thruster blocks. Uh, I guess they were sort of sticking out like that. I don't know why they were sticking out like that, but they were. Okay, well, I guess that's fair enough at this stage. Temperature on the heat shield is approaching 1100 degrees Celsius, which is pretty darn dangerous. We are now definitively losing some blade of shielding. Fairly rare in this particular version of everything. 1240 degrees Celsius seems to be flattening out at about 1243 and going down. That's probably the remaining thruster block. No, it's actually one of the Reflectron DP-10s. Those were sort of sticking out a little bit too. Well, let's hope no more of those go, otherwise, well, hopefully the parachutes will deploy fine, but, you know, it's nicer to have them active so that we can retain communication and and all that. But, uh, okay, we're cooling down now. Didn't really need that much of layer shielding. We are... Yeah, we're landing in Somalia. Oh well. Gotta stop flight computer from holding orbit retrograde. Just let the atmosphere do its thing. Okay, uh, we've got one parachute deployed. Not too sure why that one deploys and the other ones don't. We'll see what the velocity is when they fully open up and then I'll decide whether or not to dump the heat shield. Right now it's sort of providing a buffer for the goo container. Okay well now that's pretty slow so uh, I think we can keep the heat shield. Sort of unbalanced. That's probably because of the stuff we lost. We've got one RCS port here dangling off to the side. Yeah. Maybe we could have the yeah, have the RCS port correct for the fact that it still exists. No, nope, still can't do it. Okay, don't sink into the ground, please. We've had enough of that in this series. Alright, well, probably 
Probably have to do some interesting negotiations to bring this back, but let's recover vessel. Okay, so 225 science earned. That's excellent, though we're not really pressed for science anyway. Uh, parts, we didn't get very much of that back. And, of course, we weren't fulfilling a contract. So that's a downside because we, we sort of did that whole thing without really replenishing funds. So we're going to have to do those satellite contracts like this Tundra Orbit one and uh, I think we had another one. So, yep, but uh, that's the situation. We managed to send a probe to the surface of the moon and bring a sample back. So that is excellent and we'll look forward to more adventurous things in the future after we do some satellite stuff. So uh, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.